Right. No, we're going live. <clears throat> Just going to double check. Okay, we are live, folks. So let the congregation know that this is your two minute morning. Grab your coffee and your comfortable slippers and your favorite blanket. <laughs> And there we are. It's the truth. This is kind of cool, hey, Nigrans? Ah, uh, yes, it's lots of fun. <laughs> should have some Happy to see everybody. Yes, good morning. Do 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 do. <laughs> do Morning, April. Uh, you are now the host as well, Gerald. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, it's 10.30. Rock and roll. Are you going to welcome everybody? I thought you were going, oh, sorry. Oh. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome. Um, it's Sunday and it's really good to be here with Gabby, Honest, mm -hmm. and the Nigrans. So right away, we're just going to open um, our service in prayer and uh, just ask the Lord to be large and in charge here with us this morning. Father God, I thank you for Sunday mornings. I thank you that even though I can't reach out and touch my brother or my sister, I give him a hug so that we're just here together. And that's the most important part. So, Father, I ask in Jesus name that you um, would take control of this service, that you would do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just wanted to ask, did you know that you're screen sharing already to the public? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, great. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> good morning, church. Uh, let's worship and, um, and get ready for the service.
next slide. Um, good morning, everyone. So this is a bit of a first for me. So uh, bear with me as I uh, get my e IT on. Um, I just want to say what a pleasure to see, be here this morning with you and uh, and just to dive right into our service so we don't lose any time. Um, however, um, before we launch into our Nigrin moment, I want to just go to um, our prayer request because those are very important and we want to do that this morning. So we have um, a few. We have three. We have a prayer request coming in for our um, past congregant, Vicki Abril. Does everybody know, remember her? She's, uh, she was pretty great. Vicki is suffering from COVID right now, and we want to make sure she's covered. We also have a, um, a prayer request from Jonathan Rukin, who's starting a new job. Uh, so congratulations, first of all, Jonathan. That's pretty great. Uh, and we want to make sure that things go well for you, and we're just going to pray for that. Um, we have a prayer request from Alan Jorgensen for his brother-in-law, Bill, who's suffering from throat cancer. Um, and all, all of that that needs to just be covered for that. So uh, those of you that are with us today, uh, if you'll just join with me in prayer, let's just take a moment. Father God, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, that you just... Uh, you sat down with us and you opened the door and you said, come on in. And so, Father, we stand before you today and we just lift up Vicki Abril. Father, I ask that COVID is not a lasting thing for her. I pray that it's an, a, just a walk that she finishes to complete health. I pray for no lingering, um, no long haul, no anything. Father, I pray that you bless her. Father, I pray you keep her spirits up in Jesus' name. I pray for healing. In Jesus' name, I pray for protection in our household. In Jesus' name, Father, we just lift up Jonathan and Lord. Come this Thursday when he starts that new job, Lord, he just walks in confidence and that he um, takes solid steps, just solid steps. And Father, I pray that you would bless him in this new place, that that he would um, be encouraged and and be an encouragement that he would have success and favor in Jesus name. Come Thursday morning, he, he's gonna have a great day. I pray that for Jonathan. Father, I ask that you would be with Bill Brooks today. Lord, I ask that he doesn't have any lingering pain in his throat. I pray that the cancer would begin to shrink now, even in the name of Jesus, in Jesus name. Father, I ask that his wife and his, his family would just have peace and confidence. Father, the, the, the testimony that Alan and Susan have been for so many, many years would just come to the, the forefront of his thinking right now. And he would remember, he would remember what he's been told and, and what's been shared with him. Father, just loom large in his thinking today. And Father God, heal him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. So um, Pastor Sam isn't here right now, so I wonder if we should say something. No, I won't, because I'm mature. Just go with that. Father, I just ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with our service right now. Lord, that you would bless my brother, Gerald that he would have a marvelous time this morning. I pray for Ruth, that she would have a marvelous time this morning. Um, so last night, Gerald and I just took a bit of time on the phone and Ruth and uh, believe it or not, I've known this man since 1976. So I was a mere child at 12 and he was way older but he was somebody that shared Jesus with me at that age which was pretty important so um it's pretty uh amazing this this morning to be sharing Jesus together after 40 plus years it's a serious blessing 
Now, as you know, we've um, we've uh, been supporting Gerald and Ruth in their ministry in Mexico for a number of years for many things. We've relied on them to be our eyes and ears there. And, um, you know, the many times we've prayed and for the situation there and for our Mexican families. It's pretty important. Um, so without further ado, we'll just pass it over to my brother. Now, if you're looking for just a speaker view, if you go, you, should, uh, you shouldn't have any problem. I'm going to unmute and, and, and get out of the way, but my phone is on. And so if there's any further prayer requests or anything like that, please um, text me, put it on Facebook, do whatever you gotta do. And you see these beautiful people, they have the service now. Go for it, Gerald. Thank you, Ger Cheryl. Good morning, everyone. It's a real joy to be with you in this virtual way. We have so much to be thankful for, to have use of internet and technology and to keep in touch and enjoy fellowship in this way. The Bible verse on my heart today is where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name. He is there. And it's glorious to sense his presence in our homes and to know he will meet our every need in every area of our life. And the song in my heart today is, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to give my life to you. So let's open our hearts this morning even more and hear from him. I'm going to go off camera now and we'll worship with you on my iPad. Well, as Ruth said, it's a real joy for us to be with you today and uh, to be able to share this time in your service. And we are uh, just wanting to take time today to be able to focus our hearts on the Lord and to be able to set aside other things and to see today as an opportunity to be at a refuge with the Lord and in a place that's closed in with him and to be able to have uh, opportunity to worship and to give him thanks today. So I invite you to join me in prayer before we go into the uh, message, please. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for uh, we have this confidence and we have this privilege. We have this fellowship. We have this relationship of family with one another and and to be able to come before you and to be able to say, Abba, Father. And we thank you for you are present here today. And your presence means that we have the confidence of your power, of your healing, of your blessing, of your anointing, of your guiding and directing in each of our lives. And so we commit ourselves to you and we open our hearts so we would be able to uh, receive your word and uh, that this. A uh, word would be able to minister to us today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> the message is about the arrow today. Uh, and so the uh, question is, did you ever use a bow and arrow? And uh, at what age and where? Uh, so comment to the person beside you and on the Facebook comments section, if you would like to uh, write down there about uh, what age and where were you, uh, if you can remember when you first used or when you had an enjoyable experience with a bow and arrow. Uh, for you royal watchers like Ruth, uh, here's a picture from years ago of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge demonstrating the use of the bow and arrow. Uh, so it was obviously a joyful time for them. And uh, in my own experience, it reminds me of summer camp. 
as we had archery as a skill activity. And uh, thank the Lord during uh, those camps in a number of places, uh, the Lord was gracious. He kept us safe. Uh, we learned, uh, many of us learned new skills and had fun. And uh, so, yeah, it's just a, an opportunity for us to uh, think about this as we go into our message this morning. Uh, I attended a Kairos course a number of years ago, and you see the little name there at the bottom of the screen, and uh, was introduced to the illustration of the arrow. And uh, so I give credit to Kairos uh, for the original outline and the graphics for this message. Uh, it was just such an important thing for me and just spoke so much about what I wanted to share with you and what we're about in Mexico in missions. You know, the use of the arrow was uh, well understood in Bible times. Uh, arrows were used to hit targets. Arrows were used in warfare. Arrows were used in hunting. And actually in the Bible, the arrow is mentioned in various scriptures, uh, but we're just going to look at one today. So I invite you to look up in your Bible in the Old Testament book of Isaiah chapter 49, and we're going to uh, look at verses one to three. And here in this scripture, we see that God draws our attention to the work that he does uh, in us and through us. And uh, so we're going to read the scripture. I'm going to read in the New International Version. Isaiah 49, uh, starting at verse one. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel in whom I will display my splendor. So this passage in Isaiah, it's a, a prophetic passage. Uh, it's talking and the servant of the Lord is Jesus. Uh, he is the father's arrow who hit the bullseye of God's redemptive purpose for the nations. And the servant of the Lord here, as it's in this scripture in Isaiah, it can also be applied to the nation of Israel, who in the Old Testament was God's arrow, but they missed the target miserably. It could also be applied to the church or to us individually, as in this generation, we are God's arrows. And so right from the outset, it's uh, important for us to see there's three examples here with different results. Uh, the first one, Jesus the Messiah, was 100%, yes. Uh, the second example, Israel, uh, the nation, uh, we notice that they failed. They had the opportunity. They were uh, uh, called by God to it, but uh, they failed in the opportunity uh, to hit God's, God's mark. And uh, the third one, the church and the individual believer, well, that's what's in play today. And uh, that's the question that is there for you to be able to examine uh, your relationship with the Lord and the extent to which you are accomplishing God's purpose. Uh, so we're going to uh, take a look at the ABCs and we're going to see our part in uh, God's uh, mission. So the first one uh, is, are you available? Uh, so firstly, the arrow simply needs to be available. Uh, the archer is the one who is in charge of the care, the activity, and the destiny of the arrow. And the same is true as of us as God's arrows. And uh, in the first part of John 15 and verse 16, uh, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. And so the question is, are you available to God? You see, if your life lacks purpose and success, uh, you need to realize that you cannot do it on your own. 
And uh, up until now, you've been searching for answers in all of the wrong places. And that's why your life lacks purpose. And that's why uh, you lack success and you lack uh, the confidence of being able to go forward day after day. And so today, God is uh, you wanting to use you uh, and give you a place of purpose and success. And so if you haven't done so yet, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity as we're gathered today uh, for you simply to say, Lord Jesus, I lay down my life for you. I recognize that you are the one who is choosing me, giving me this opportunity of a life of purpose and success. And I want to say yes to you. And uh, so uh, make your uh, comment there if you would like to in the section, uh, in the comments section, Lord Jesus, I'm fully available to you. And uh, this is important whether you just now uh, became available to God, or whether you have known the Lord for a number of years, uh, it's good to be able to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And as many of you who are who are on this live stream now, uh, I invite you to make that comment, Lord Jesus, I'm fully available to you. And secondly, in the ABCs, uh, the arrow needs to be balanced. Uh, there are uh, three parts, the tip, uh, the shaft, and the flight. And all of these need to be in good condition. And when we look at this, we can see that there is an application to our personal lives, first and foremost. Uh, there's application to our ministry and uh, application to our local church and uh, looking at this aspect of balance. So the three parts of the arrow, they can be applied as follows. The tip, uh, speaking about ministry gifts and skills, uh, the shaft uh, referring to our character, our Christian character, and then the flight referring to our sensitivity to the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Now, there are different kinds of arrow. Uh, you can see this first one, we could call it the ideal arrow. And uh, the saying is straight as an arrow. Uh, and so these, uh, uh, this arrow, we can see that there's a sharp pointed tip, there's a straight shaft, and there's an excellent flight. Uh, these are people with well-developed uh, ministry skills with godly character and they're led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is amazing when we see uh, this ideal picture. And of course, your arrow and my arrow may not be ideal, but that's what we're about today. And the Lord is wanting to minister to us today. And uh, I'm challenged as I make a self-evaluation, as I look at these three aspects, and uh, would like to encourage you also uh, to make a self-evaluation in the light of God's standards that are uh, shown in his word. So what is the problem with this arrow? Well, it looks like it's all bad. Uh, this second kind of arrow is a crooked shaft arrow. Uh, these people may have very good ministry skills as illustrated by the fine tip, uh, but unfortunately, uh, they have bad or underdeveloped character as illustrated by the crooked shaft. You know, a key passage on the, uh, that, uh, with regard to Christian character is in Galatians 5, verses 22 to 24. And part of the passage says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, and self-control. Think about those and other uh, Christian character traits in Galatians 5 and in other part of the scripture. And uh, put a comment there in the comments section. Which character trait will you improve and develop this month? Think about it as a commitment to the Lord. You see, we need to be careful with this type of arrow where we see the character issue. 
because the lack of Christ-like character, first of all, it doesn't hit the mark. And secondly, it may even hinder the unreached in coming to Christ and cause relationship problems. So because of the crooked shaft, uh, then it will go off course and it will also uh, could uh, cause problems and uh, to other people, uh, other team members, other family members in, in our family and in our church and uh, cause problem with relationship problems and also cause uh, problems with those that we're trying to reach for the gospel, whether it be uh, in our home area or whether it be uh, on the foreign field as we're reaching out to the least people, uh, least reach people groups. Uh, this arrow, it looks a lot better than the last, but what is probably it? You see this arrow, uh, we see that it is, uh, there are good people, uh, they're nice people and they have excellent Christ-like character. But the problem is, is that they haven't developed their spiritual gifts and ministry skills. Uh, so we see that uh, ministry, ministry gifts and skills issue uh, that is illustrated there by the blunt uh, tip. Uh, believers have a number of ministry gifts and skills, and it's good for us to think about that today and to think about the way uh, that God gives ministry gifts and skills to his family and to his body. So as we enlarge the tip of the arrow, we can see that uh, gifts include a number of activities and skills. And uh, so let's use the example of evangelism. Uh, included in personal uh, evangelism, there are several skills to reach others with the good news. Uh, often it starts with conversations. And, uh, you know, the one thing that makes one interesting is a variety of interests. And uh, this is an idea for us to uh, be intentional and to have uh, a wide number of interests so that we're able to have conversations with people uh, as a precursor to the actual evangelism. Another thing that is uh, part of evangelism can be helping to meet the needs of others. And this is so important as we uh, need to be on alert and noticing uh, with our family members, with our neighbors, with those that we work or study with, uh, what needs do they have and how are we able to meet those needs? Uh, this also is something that will contribute toward uh, ministry of evangelism. And, and the key thing, of course, is building relationships. So it's not simply that we're looking for an individual that we can uh, preach to or that we can uh, evangelize and win for Christ, uh, but it's actually building relationships with people over a period of time. And these things, the building relationships, helping meet needs of others, the conversations, uh, these will all provide the atmosphere uh, for evangelism to take place. And so gifts and skills need to be honed to provide penetration and the effective ministry of the gospel. Uh, so it's uh, an important thing. You can apply this not only to evangelism, but also to other areas of gifting and think about what are the things that contribute uh, in order to make your, your gift uh, hone to be able to have that good, uh, sharp point. So ministry gifts and skills need to be developed and uh, used for the glory of God. Now, how much of your spiritual gifts and ministry skills been developed this year? There's some key scriptures on ministry gifts and disciplines and skills that are found and you could note these down if you want to, to read them later. Uh, the key scriptures are Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, Ephesians 4, and 1 Peter 4, verses 9 to 11. 
And as we think of the gifts, there's a number of them that come to mind without even reading these scriptures. Uh, gifts and skills like evangelism, teaching, miracles, prophecy, discipling, singing, praying, serving, helps, administration, caring, counseling, compassion, and serving. So I invite you to make a, uh, in the comments section, to write down uh, the spiritual gifts, disciplines, and ministry skills that I'm developing are. So once again, in the comments section, just an opportunity for you to identify and to write down what uh, ministry gifts are you developing right now? So uh, we see that uh, there can be a fourth type of arrow that you notice here. And it's good, but this here is a damaged flight arrow. And uh, so it's not going to be effective either. Uh, two out of three parts of the arrow are in excellent condition. Uh, see these people, they display excellent character and good ministry gifts and skills, but their sensitivity to the voice and leading of the spirit is missing. The arrow, the errors that come uh, when we're not sensitive to the spirit, sometimes it's speaking too much and not listening. Sometimes the error, error of standing still when it's time to take a step of faith. The error of just hugging when it's time to speak. Or the error of speaking when it's time to just hug and to demonstrate love to another individual. You see, the key is listening to that still small voice and then acting in obedience to God. Success in ministry and missions depends so much on being led by God's Holy Spirit. And it's good for us to focus on this. And next Sunday is uh, Pentecost Sunday. And as we think of that, and as we think of our lives, and uh, what is our dependence really on God's Holy Spirit? So let's look at some examples in Jesus' life. For example, Matthew 4 and verse 1 says, Jesus was led by the Spirit. And uh, even in that context, it was uh, before a temptation, but it was still Jesus being led. And Jesus only did what the Father commanded and what he saw the Father doing. And a scripture for that is John chapter 5 and verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer when they asked him about his authority. He said, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing because whatever the son, whatever the father does, the son also does. So, wow, talk about an example uh, for, uh, from he who hit the mark perfectly of God's redemptive plan uh, for the nations. So the personal and ministry application question is, are you balanced? Imagine if you were to draw your own arrow, what would it look like? And you're maybe not able to do this in the comments uh, section. Uh, maybe if there's somebody beside you or just uh, the most important thing is before the Lord. If you were to draw your arrow, what would it look like uh, right at this present time? Is the arrow tip really sharp or is it a bit blunt? What ministry gifts and skills do you need to strengthen right now? Is the arrow shaft really straight or is it a bit or a lot crooked? Is God challenging you in the error area of Christian character? Is the arrow flight in great shape or is it a bit damaged? Are you simply doing things for obligation or out of habit? Have you become distance, hard and callous and need a new sensitivity uh, to the leading of God's Holy Spirit? In what area is God speaking to you about 
regarding balance in your life right now. So continuing with the ABCs of effective life and ministry, the letter C is for the word called. Uh, the arrow has a reason for existing and it is to make an impact. Uh, and so when we think of that, we notice a target that's there at the bottom. And then we notice that when used in target practice, the purpose is to hit the bullseye. And when used in hunting, the purpose is that the arrow hit and kill the animal. Uh, when used in war, the purpose is that the arrow hit and defeat the enemy. And likewise, you and I also are called to make an impact. Our Lord and Master says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. You see, you are called to be fruitful. You are called to be a fruitful woman, a fruitful man, a fruitful youth. Your ministry skills and gifts will result in fruitfulness for the kingdom of God and, uh, and also for the fruitfulness of your local church. And, uh, and all of you, you are called to be a fruitful church family, uh, hitting the bullseye of God's purposes. The Lord Jesus said, as you, Father, sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. In John 17, verse 18. What an amazing privilege. What an amazing blessing. What an amazing thing to think that just as the Father sent Jesus into the world, for that plan of redemption, of help, of healing, uh, that uh, Jesus has also sent us into the world. And so it's a recognition that we are in the world to make an impact for the Lord. You see, we always need to be uh, making an impact for the Lord. It's just that sometimes it will be in different ways, uh, different, uh, with different people, in different places and at different times. You see, at a particular time, you may be uh, called to focus on your workplace. And at another time, you may be called to focus on, uh, on babies and children. And at another time, you may be called to focus on music and art and speaking. At another time, you may be called to focus on your neighbors and your community. Or you may be called to focus on uh, on the elderly and taking time and ministering to them. You see, God sends us to minister his love to all people at all times and in all places. And, uh, you know, as we look back at areas that we have been involved in in ministry, uh, these are opportunities for us to give thanks to the Lord and to give glory to the Lord. But, uh, you know, I have a sense that there is uh, someone or maybe more than one person who is uh, listening or who is watching today. And uh, somehow when you think of ministry things that the Lord had you do in the past, that there's, uh, that there's a feeling that what is happening right now isn't as good, that it isn't right, it isn't as big, it isn't as important. And, uh, and that, that's not true. It's simply not true. Whatever area the Lord is using you in today, uh, this is according to his timing, according to his purpose, and according to what he wants to do. And uh, so the Lord would say to you, behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And uh, God would speak to you confirming that the way that he would use you, the people that he is bringing you to right now, that this is God's time, that this is God's purpose. And, uh, and uh, just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I receive. And I'm willing to be involved according to the way that you would have me to be uh, serving right now. So now to wrap things up, 
it's time for personal application. And how much glory we give to God will depend on our answers to the ABC questions. Are you available? Are you balanced? And what are you called to right now? And as we can honestly make an evaluation and focus in on these things, uh, it's going to be for uh, God's glory as uh, we respond to him. And the application that we see for the church family, ministry gifts and skills, character, and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit can and should all be continuously developed in cooperation with the local church. And uh, so the very, the importance of family, the importance of us working and ministering together and the unity of the body of Christ, even when it's a little harder uh, to do that during these restrictions, uh, this is something that, that really needs to be a priority uh, for us in our lives. And so as I bring this message to a close, I would like to uh, take an opportunity to pray for and with you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your calling, for your choosing in our lives. Father, we thank you that you are the giver of all good gifts. And Father, that we can uh, receive from you and that we can be able to be your hand extended and be able to reach out and be able to minister to those who are nearby uh, to uh, demonstrate our love for God and for uh, our neighbor, beginning with our closest neighbor and reaching out even to our neighbors who are farther away. We pray, Lord, that you would give creativity, that you would give the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that you would give the confirmation, uh, Father, of those things that you are stirring in our heart today, uh, that this would not simply be a time of, uh, of thinking of these things, but an opportunity to put into motion uh, that which you would desire to do in our lives. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. So we're going to uh, talk about our ministry as foreign missionaries and really the message of the arrow uh, sums up what we are all about uh, on the foreign field. And uh, we're based in Puebla in the mountainous region of central Mexico. And from there, we minister out to other places in Mexico, in Latin America and beyond. And the primary purpose of our work is with national Spanish speaking church and ministry leaders. Our marching orders are declared in Matthew 28 uh, verses 19 and 20, which says in part, uh, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. You see, our ongoing vision and mission is to teach, to disciple, and to train men and women in evangelism, outreach, and missions. We are so pleased to be able to say a heartfelt thank you to you today for your prayer and financial support. Uh, your uh, financial support is always uh, faithful. We can always depend on it and your increase that you have given us. Uh, we thank you so very much. And as we focus on training and equipping national leaders, your resources are multiplied through us to others and further even to those that they reach and disciple. So it's really a multiplication process. Our ministry is carried out in local churches, in Bible and training schools, and through writing and producing printed and digital uh, training materials. And through the printed materials, the uh, videos, the sermons, the seminars, and the classes, we focus on sensitivity to God's Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit for signs, wonders, and miracles. Our courses also serve to train gospel workers so that they will be effective uh, in evangelism, outreach, teaching, 
and training others, whether it be children, youth, or adults. But one of the key components in our ministries is the demonstration and development of the fruit of God's Holy Spirit so that gospel workers will be able to serve with integrity, honesty, and Christ-likeness in their homes, neighborhoods, places of work and study, in their communities, and in their churches. And really, this is the key. Uh, this is what is uh, needed uh, so much in our society on the mission field and in Mexico and Latin America. So through God's grace and enablement, our ministry is fruitful as those we train make an impact in evangelism, teaching, and discipling. We request your continued support and prayer. Colossians 4 and verse 3 says, talk to God about us too. Ask him to open a way for us to tell people his message. We want to tell God's plan about Christ. See, our dedication to God is, I give myself away so you can use me. To close our time, we'll play a video uh, that is showing some of our ministry activities. And as you see the faces on the screen, we invite you to pray for us and for those we minister to, or simply use these minutes to worship the Lord and commit yourself to God. We invite you to sing along to the Lord.
Amen. God bless you. Thank you all. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Ruth. Um, it's, it's important to see um, what you do, and it gives them words and pictures to us that we can take to our prayer closets and um, and to remain faithful in supporting your ministry in each and every way. Um, I feel I feel challenged today. Like maybe there should be something more that I can do. And I'm going to be praying into that. Um, I want you to know, everyone, that I miss you. And when I do see you, it it's uh, important to me. And you bring my, me joy when I do see you. So... Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just take a moment just to to pray and close. And Gerald's got the calm, so he'll he'll turn he'll switch me off. And I'm sure he's been waiting years to do that. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this morning, and I thank you so much for what you do and how you do it, and the love and the care that you motivate us through, and how. Each and every um, person here just is the reflection of an arrow and a balance and a walk. And that's so important. And thank you, God, that you are completely invested in what that looks like. Thank you for that. Father God, I, I lift up Gerald and Ruth to you today. Father God, just as they've given out, and I know they've been home, and I ask that you continue to replenish them, that you would bring them into good health. I pray in Jesus' name that you would fill them daily with your Holy Spirit. And I pray for just a, a fresh and a new anointing on their ministry, just as their um, home and they're just thinking ahead to the days when they can move forward again. Father, we pray for the work going on in Mexico and Puebla and the many um, faces and pastors and families and students that are there. Father, we think of them today and we ask God that you would anoint them, that you would love them, that you would carry them, that you would keep them in good health. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for today. Thank you so much for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, have a great week, guys. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon.